We enjoyed the changing scenery. Cool green hills, the tobacco plantations in the Vumba and vibrant ecology in and around Lake Kariba. It is here in Matopos that Cecil John Rhodes is buried. It is also home to the white rhino. Matopos comes from Amatobo, meaning bald-headed ones. The rock formations are often referred to as balancing rocks, and we also found quite spectacular ones near Harare. The granite ruins of Great Zimbabwe are considered the largest historic relic in southern Africa. More than a million pieces of hand-hewn interlocking stones have remained in place over the centuries without the aid of mortar. In Victoria Falls, we could hear the thundering of the water from quite a distance. Immense cataracts plunge over the 1,700 meters wide cliff edge straight down into the deep gorges that separate Zambia from Zimbabwe. The spreading spray is referred to as the smoke that thunders. Makishi dancers evoke the spirit of ancient cultures with bizarre costume and vibrant dance. The Okavango is one of the world's largest deltas. The floods are fed from the Angolan rains and take almost nine months to reach the end of their itinerary. During the peak of the flooding, the delta can expand to over 16,000 square kilometers and shrink to less than 9,000 in the low period. Elephants take regular mud baths to protect their skin from burning, insect bites and loss of moisture. Wallowing also regulates body temperature, and so do the large flapping ears. On hot days, we saw elephants flapping their ears constantly to create a slight breeze. In fact, it is this breeze that cools the blood vessels in the thin skin of the ear. The cooler blood gets circulated to the rest of the body and can make a substantial difference in temperature. But beware, the flapping ears can also indicate that the elephant is quite agitated, as was this one. About two million years ago, Itosha was an enormous lake fed by the Kunene River. But over time, the river changed its course, and as a result, the lake slowly dried up. The Himba are a minority group in Namibia. They represent less than 1% of the population, and are one of the last nomadic people of Africa. The Himba rub their bodies with red ochre and fat to protect themselves from the sun. The women are known for their intricate hairstyles and jewelry. And as in many African tribes, the Himba children too wear a leather talisman around the neck to dispel the attentions of evil spirits. One of the researchers we met took us on a field trip. At the crack of dawn, we set off searching for a big game, but instead 
we soon discovered a fascinating world of plants and insects, like the dung beetle. Dung beetles feed on dung. There are the dwellers, who live in manure, and the tunnelers, who bury the dung wherever they find it. This little fellow is a roller, because he rolls the dung into balls, which are used as a food source or as a brooding chamber. And how does a plant like the Welwitsia survive for 2,500 years? It is reputed to be the longest living plant on Earth. Its two undulating leaves help to trap water and minimize loss of moisture. As the day progressed, it became hotter and hotter. Many creatures of the desert emerge only at night when the air temperature cools down. This is not so for the oryx or the springbok, who don't even mind a good fight in the heat of the day. What is their secret? By ceasing to sweat, they can survive for weeks without drinking. Their body temperature may rise as high as 45 degrees Celsius and can be sustained at this level thanks to an ingenious cooling mechanism in the brain. Deep canyons and lunar landscapes took us further south. South Africa welcomed us with millions of bright flowers. With the first rains in winter, the semi-desert of Namaqualand underwent an impressive transformation of floral abundance. The colors were so intense that they hurt my eyes. <laughs> 